Hello, I stuck a little GPS module on this quadcopter here to do some recording of GPS telemetry while it was flying. I tried this recently with the radio control car and it worked pretty well. So the idea here is exactly the same. Um, and I just was kind of interested to see how well the 10 hertz GPS performs. Uh, so what we have here is my, uh, it's a Arduino Pro Mini on here and it's using my slightly modified version of MultiWii which um, talks directly to the RF24 radio module there. Uh, so the radio module, no, the, <laughs> the radio is able to send back binary data, any binary data that the MultiWii itself knows about. So in this case, we're just looking at some uh, numbers to get the GPS location. And this <coughs> module here, uh, the only way this is really going to work on a Pro Mini is by using the U-Blocks binary protocol because it's a, it's a lot lighter on code and you don't need to pass any uh, NMEA strings, text strings or anything like that. Um, and I also had to cut out the barometer code and the compass code that this breakout board, IMU board here is capable of because that wasn't going to fit into the um, memory of the Pro Mini either. So unfortunately we just have GPS data. Um, if I was using a Mega we'd be able to have GPS, Barrow, Compass and all of the other data as well. Um, but this GPS unit here is not actually a U-Box unit, not a U-Box brand unit. It's a clone and I've been bitten by this in the past when I bought a clone that was not capable of doing the UBX binary protocol and it was not capable of using the U-Box U-Center software for changing the settings and stuff. So I was a little bit wary when I bought it, but it turns out to be very, very good. And I'm very satisfied with this and very happy with the performance. Um, <clears throat> so just to have a quick look at what this, what the results are that we got from this and why I was impressed. Uh, here we can see one of my first flights that I was doing and it's very very smooth except for a couple of jitters one kind of large jitter over to the side there at the beginning but for the most part it's just a small jitter here and there I'm not really sure why there are jitters when the rest of it is so smooth but hopefully you can see why this is quite impressive and what I'm doing here is I'm I've set the GPS to run at 10 Hertz so it's getting updates 10 times a second and those are all being sent back to the transmitter, which is my <coughs> custom, whoops, all right, uh, my custom um, funky transmitter there, which has the Odroid inside it. And every five times a second, I'm writing the entire um, data packet contents to disk. So I'm not using MySQL anymore. This, this data is coming in a little bit too fast and it's a little bit too a little bit too uniform didn't really need to be in a database so it's just getting dumped straight into a binary file and i read that back out and plugged it into the uh, javascript visualization thing on google maps to look at it um, and to have a quick look at how this was done in the multi -week code there's only a couple of things that i needed to change so this is my multi -week rf24 version and to enable GPS, you need to uncomment this line here. And for the case of Pro Mini, you need to set this to pin zero. So that uh, must be zero for Pro Mini. Now this is a oh, and you also need to uncomment one of these protocols here. So it has to be U blocks for this case. Um, now this GPS serial thing is a bit of a bummer because as soon as you enable it on pin zero, it prevents you from doing any of the multi wii GUI, the configuration GUI connections. So what you need to do is set this to, uh, it was, it would have been two if you get the source code, like, and you don't change anything, it will be two. So set that to two and upload it to the board and then do all your settings, like change your AUX switch settings and your PIDs and all that stuff. And then come back here and set it to zero and upload it again and then then you can run it with the GPS um, <clears throat> so that's just a bit of a bit of a nuisance and I found that if you comment 
rather than changing this from zero to two and back, if you comment this line out completely and do the uploading and and try that, try it that way. I found that it wiped all my aux switch settings because when you comment this out, it completely removes all of the GPS uh, features and it seems to reset, at least in my experience, it resets the settings that you had for um, when you want to be in rate mode or angle mode or horizon mode and stuff like that. So I actually got caught out by that. I went down to the flying field and I found myself in angle uh, in rate mode and with no way to auto level, so I had to come back home and reset it. Uh, anyway, so on the hardware side, it's just a matter of connecting these four pins up there. There's just ground, VCC, come on, uh, VCC, ground, TX, and RX, just basic stuff. And they go over there to the pins 0 and 1 on the Pro Mini, and that's it. Um, I was quite lucky this time in that my radio connection was very, very good. So I'm thinking that perhaps the RF24 module in my other transmitter is damaged and the one in this new transmitter here, which I haven't used that much yet, um, I'm keeping antennas on them all the time just in case that was the cause of my, cause of my problems. Um, so I'm thinking that the other transmitter may have been damaged by not having antennas on when it was turned on every now and then. But anyway, um, so for the rest of the video I put together the last of my batteries that I flew once I was confident that everything was working all right. Um, this was a 3S1300 milliamp hour battery and I just did flew around a bit and then did some relatively high speed passes. I think it can go a bit faster but it managed to get up to 56 or 57 kilometers an hour in the fastest pass. pass. So not really, not exactly a racer kind of setup but uh, it does all right. And I put the video that I took while I was standing there together with the display uh, the the map points being displayed on the map and I also ran it through or I wrote a little program to calculate the kilometers per hour speed of it at each point and display that on the screen as well so that's what we're looking at here
Well, there you go. I think you get the idea. Sorry, just one more thing I meant to show you before about the um, how the source code works. So in the ACK payload, uh, I'm using these values here, GPS chord 0 and 1. So this is lat and long, latitude and longitude there. And you can also get GPS altitude, which is the altitude reading directly from the GPS. If you also have a barometer, you can use this one, estimated altitude, uh, which should give you a much better reading. I found that this GPS altitude was pretty much useless because my original plan was to make a 3D visualization of this data instead of just a 2D one so that we could have altitude and position and um, we could also draw a little 3D model of the of the quadcopter because we also have the pitch and the roll and the heading although I, of course I don't have compass either but but with a, an, a, um, a Mega 2650 board you'd be able to get all this data no problem so anyway I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching.